The Thai forest tradition was initiated by Long Poor Man. You can see the photo here. I'll keep it up. Um, now, Long Poor Man was born about 153, four years ago, something like that. Over 150 years ago. Now, Ajahn Man was part of the, was ordained in the, the Thai Dharma Yut sect. Now, in Thailand, there are two main two main branches or sects of Buddhism, and one is the Mahanikaya, one is Dhamma Yut. Uh, and those two are the main are the main sects of Buddhism in, in, in Thailand. There's another one called Dhammakai, but I don't know much about that. So uh, many Ajahn Man taught uh, many, many uh, students over the course of uh, his life. And uh, one that's really famous in the Western world where he has many disciples was Ajahn Chah, uh, Lompo Chah. Now Lompo Chah was not part of the Dharma Yut sect and he was also a student of Ajahn Man. Now Ajahn Man, which is little known to the West, it's, uh, he had many, many students in the Dharma Yut sect, many, many senior students, many, and uh, of which in the West we know not much about. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Like, for example, there's, a, there's, there's quite, quite a number of uh, senior monks, famous monks that were part of uh, the Dhamma Yut sect, but also students, direct students of Lompol Man. Why Lompol Man was so significant was he started what was, what's called this forest tradition, the Thai forest tradition, where monks would live in the forest and, and undergo severe practice, severe, severe training. Uh, and usually the beginning of it, uh, when a monk started this Thai forest tradition, a monk would have to sit for 24 hours straight or at least 12 hours straight um, under this kind of training mechanism. And what they did was also follow all the Dutangas. Now the Dutangas is a special practice. It's an aesthetic aspect of Theravada Buddhism where one only eats once a day um, because in Buddhism you can... You can eat um, when you've gone arms round and you can put some food aside and eat it later before 12 o'clock, before midday. In Dutanga, we don't do that, right? One of the rules of Dutanga is you only eat once a day. Um, also, it's, uh, a monk does not have to eat out of a bowl, can eat out of a plate. Uh, but part of the Dutanga practice is the monk will only eat from the bowl, right? Um, and the monk, and another practice of Dutanga is the monk will only eat arms round. Now, in some temples, um, there, there are lay people who will cook food at the temple and offer it to the monks. In Dutanga, we don't necessarily do that. It's just only food from arms round, right? So th there's 13 of these rules. And, and uh, one of the hard ones, the hardest ones is no laying down at all. It's called the sitter's practice. Um, and it's quite quite a famous practice here. In Thailand, uh, there are many monks that have done it for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and monks that just have never laid down. Uh, so that's definitely part of the aesthetic, aesthetic practice of the Theravadan tradition. Now, this Thai Theravada tradition is also involves um, staying in really um, harsh, uh, dangerous places for long periods at a time. And Ajahn Man was known for that. He used to uh, look for caves um, in those days and we're talking Thailand back a uh, hundred years ago right 80 years ago a hundred years ago 120 years ago right because if he was born a hundred and over 150 years ago you'd have considered Thailand was not the Thailand of today so it was lot very rural lots of forest everywhere jungles everywhere tigers roamed uh, the north uh, as they don't do much today but elephants bears um, yeah, all kinds of cats, all kinds of uh, snakes, like all kinds of animals, all kinds of insects. So Ajahn Man used to look for caves in, in the tiger areas and stay there by himself. Um, and that's why he was known as one, one, a really um, disciplined but very astute monk and, and garnished a lot of respect a lot of respect from the Thai community and uh, from the from from the Western 
Buddhist community as well in, uh, in terms of Theravada, uh, who's interested in the Thai tradition. Um, one of his most famous students was Longta Mahabua, who passed away about 12 years ago. Uh, Longta Mahabua wrote a book um, called Patibata, uh, and it was based on Lompo Man's practice. And a lot of monks uh, follow that. Uh, Western monks followed that because we have the, uh, it was fortunate that that book was also translated into English. And that was uh, done by Longta Mahabua and his students. And Longta Mahabua has uh, quite a lot of students in, uh, in Thailand, still in Thailand, but in the West too. Uh, lots of the, he's had quite a few Western monks study underneath him. So there's also other monks like Lompo Lee, um, who uh, what Ahsoka Ram, uh, in 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 uh, southern Thailand, uh, Lompo Chop, Lompo Chop was was one of the senior students of Lompo Man, uh, Lompo Kao, Lompo Fan, uh, and many others. Uh, Lompo Lompo Tun, Lompo Tun was the most senior. Um, and I'll try to find pictures, or I'll try to find information on these, uh, on all on all these uh, students of Lompoman. But he also had a lot of uh, novice monks underneath him, um, and many other monks even today that are still alive. There's not many, but they are. There's they're, they're still monks that are alive. And a lot of Western monks in Dhammayut started from uh, studied from uh, second generation first generation and second generation uh, uh, students of Lompo Man. In my case, I've studied under Lompo Chanrian, which I'll, my next video will be on uh, talking a little bit about Lompo Chanrian. Lompo Chanrian was a student of Lompo Chop. Lompo Chop was one of the most senior students of, uh, of Lompo Man. And we also have Lompo Louis. And, and there's many, there's, there's, there's quite a number of these people and I'm, I'm kind of, uh, putting it out there to let people know that there's a lot of um, good monks still in practice and uh, carrying on this Thai forest tradition uh, in Thailand, and it it has spread it has spread to the west, but uh, the Dharmia tradition is is not uh, very well known, uh, particularly uh, in Australia or America or Canada or New Zealand or Europe. There are there are Dharmia centers, but it's not particularly known. Um, and the, the reason why I'm saying that is just for educational purposes, and just to let you know, there, you know, that this practice is still is still going strong, and there are Dhammayut centers, Dhammayut temples in all these countries, and I would ask you to seek them out. If if you're interested in Dhammayut um, in America, you should check out uh, Ajahn Jeff Tanisaro, who's in California, and Ajahn Dick Silarantano, Silarantano, Sila, Silaratano. Uh, and he's in Virginia. I'm not sure if it's west or yeah, well, Virginia. Anyway, uh, he has a temple there. Um, and Ajahn Dick was a direct disciple of Longta Mahabua. And Ajahn Jeff was a, a, I can't remember that who he learned from, but he was second generation from Lompo Lee. Um, so uh, both are very astute monks, very very astute dharma, very good good practice, and they're in America. Uh, in Australia, we've we've got quite a few temples. There's one in Sydney, one in Newcastle, one in Queensland, uh, one in Lumia, which is in New South Wales, uh, in Canberra, in Cairns, uh, even in uh, even in uh, Tasmania, even in Tasmania, in Melbourne, um, and in Canada we have Dhamma Yut centres as well. I'm not sure where they are. There's there's one in New York, which I stayed at. Uh, there's one in Italy, in the north of Italy, uh, in Verona. Uh, and I think there's some in Germany too. So I mean, you can look at it. You can look it up yourself. Uh, you, you can join my Telegram group, and we can talk about it. I can try to give you information, or you can just look it up. It's not that difficult. <clears throat> um, so yeah, Lompo Man uh, was known for his what I call his his. Uh, I, call, I I often put put, put pictures of uh, him with two tigers by his side. Um, I call him one of the, the fierce monks of our gener of the last generation, of the last century. And I think it's important, like a lot of monks uh, still follow him and still pay respects to him. And his teachings are still very solid 
uh, in this tradition. Uh, and even with Lompo Chanrian, uh, oh, actually I'll talk about that separately. So yeah, I hope you can read up and do some research on Lompo Man because Lompo Man it was a very important monk in the Thai forest tradition. In fact, the I'd say the progenitor, the pioneer of it. And it invigorated Buddhism in Thailand, uh, from what I heard from a lot of Thai people. It kind of brought back, um, it, it, it kind of revitalized Buddhism in Thailand and revitalized the faith in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Not that there wasn't there before, but the, the, the staunch aesthetic, uh, ascetic uh, kind of practice uh, had long been gone uh, for, for some time. So uh, Ajahn Man was able to re reinvigorate that and reinitiate that into Thailand. And, you know, we've, we've got today many, many disciples and many people benefiting from this, including myself, including myself, 150, over 150 years later, um, I'm benefiting from that practice uh, that he initiated. And you see a lot of senior monks in Dhamma who talk about Ajahn Man uh, quite frequently, quite frequently, because he was a very rare and special monk and did a lot of things that uh, a, lot, a lot of monks today wouldn't be able to do. It's also because um, the, the, the jungles are just not, uh, it's a little bit, they're, they're, they're a lot less. Right? It's a different time, it's a different era. So not that I'm trying to uh, bring down monks of this era, not at all, right? Because there are very good monks with ascetic practice that, that follow the ascetic practices um, here in Thailand. There's another special monk, uh, uh, Venerable Yu Lokanatha, who was an Italian-American monk who didn't lay down, once he ordained, he didn't lay down for something like 36 years. He died at the age of 69. He ordained in 1925. He's a he was a staunch advocate of uh, veganism in Buddhism, even though he ordained in the um, I think it was the what was it Myanmar in the Myanmar tradition, right? He wasn't in, he didn't ordain in the Thai tradition, but he's got a fascinating story as well. But I consider Ajahn Man though uh, to me I consider Ajahn Man uh, as as the one of the most is, is, is kind of the monk I revered one, the most. I revered uh, Venerable Lokanatha as well, but Ajahn Man was responsible for the uh, like a massive, massive boon of creating, of, of invigorating and starting what was called the Thai forest tradition. So I hope you look it up and, and find out more about it. 